Hello friends, so today we're going to discuss the first three problems from the latest lead code weekly contest 227. The first three problems are not too difficult, but still we have to look into these problems because we have to develop a mindset of solving different types of problems. Even if the problem is hard or difficult, we should solve the problems as fast as possible. And also we, we need to solve all the problems because we have to expose ourselves to a lot of problems, then only we can solve the easy problems or the hard problems in a contest also. So let's start the first three problems and then the, 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 like the last problem will be in the last video, the next video. So let's start. The first problem is check if an array is sorted and rotated. So you are actually given a sorted and like you are given an array and you just have to check that whether this array is sorted and also rotated. Okay, so okay. Now you cannot just rotate out the array again and again and check that whether it is sorted or not. Okay, uh, because the array is like the size is very small, you can also do that, which means that uh, like what you can do here is you can rotate this array n times. So it, it will be at max 100 times you will rotate that like this array and check that after rotation whether the array becomes sorted. If at any point the array becomes sorted, then the answer is yes. Else the answer is no because at any case the array is not rotated and sorted. But there is one more like a uh, trick you can understand in this problem is because the array is sorted. If you are assuming that the array is sorted, like as you can see, and it is increasingly sorted. Okay. So which means that like it, it should be like this one, two, three, four, five, or like anything like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is also increasing like this is sorted. Okay. Uh, so it, it should be not decreasing. It should not be strictly increasing, but it should not not decreasing. This is also sorted. So as you can see in this type of situation, what you can easily see here is in sorted arrays, which is like a non decreasing, the next number will be like, because the array is sorted, the next number will obviously be greater than the previous number or greater than or equal to, which is like this four is greater than or equal to three. This is greater than or equal to three. But now there's only one case at which the array is rotated. It occurs like it occurs oppositely, which means that now this next number is smaller than the previous else in every case the next number is greater than the previous and this again it is as you can see this is greater than the previous so if the array is only sorted and rotated how many times there there is at most one point of like conflict which will happen in this case because even the array is sorted and if you rotate it out there is no conflict because as you can see we'll always check that the next element should be greater than the previous element greater than or equal to it should be greater than or equal to this is greater than or equal to so it's always fine you just have to find out how many conflicts are there if the conflicts are less than or equal to one because one conflict is okay one conflict means that okay there is rotated in some way that we always find out one conflict even if we find out no conflict like in this manner we know, we know that like maybe the array can be one two three four five so we will iterate from like left to right and we check that okay because it is sorted there is no rotated array part so it means that like there is no conflict but even if there is only one conflict it is okay which means that it is rotated but if there are more than one conflict as you can see we always want that the next number should be greater like this is conflict this is okay okay but as you can see this is also okay but we also check for the last and the first element because it is rotated so like this is smaller than the previous so it is false so we not always like we always check the first element with the next element this and this this and now this so as you can see how many pairs I like I can check first and second second and third third and fourth fourth and first now if I again check fourth and first so now first and second so it is always checked so there how many pairs are there like this four pairs are there. we just have to check that oh, oh, like at most one conflict is there not more than one conflict if it is fine then the answer is that yes else answer is true false that's what we are doing iterating over the whole array the first element is i and the next element is i plus one mod n because when we go to the last point we just have to like uh, rotate around and come to the first element so the first element like this is i and this is i plus one and if the bs element which is the next element is greater than or equal to the previous element then the answer is okay we just continue out as there's a conflict so conflict plus plus if the conflict is less than or equal to one then the answer is obviously true else the answer is false I hope you understand the problem. The second problem is also good in which you are actually given out that a player is playing a game of, with three piles of stone. Okay. Now what the player will do in each turn, the player will take out like will take out one one stones from any two piles which has some stones left. Okay. So as you can see in this problem, there are three like three piles, two, four and six. The player will pick out one one stones from any two of these piles which has some stone left and take them out. So this will increase the score of that person by one. 
okay and that person will keep on doing this picking out two like two stones from any of these piles till that he cannot take out any two piles from different like two stones from different piles at the same time so as you can see in this case maybe the person will start picking out one coin from here and one one stone from here so so at, as you can see this is four and this is six so if you always take out the elements from or the stones from b and c then what will happen after four chances this pile will get exhausted and this pile has remaining two stones now what you can do now take out these two stones and because there are two stones are again left here so take out two and two so now two stones are also removed so how many stones are left like how many points you have gained because you have taken or done this whole process six times four with this and two from this ab so how many total times you have done this the total is six and that's the whole problem so now you have to find out the maximum score now as you can see the problem which i have done here is if i take out between these two and then take out then it is fine but let's assume i take out this this and two and four okay if i take out two and four and take picking out stones then after two two chances a will exhaust and b will become as you can see b will become two so i have taken two stones at total so to like now i have two points but now b score has become like b number of piles or so the number of stones in b is equal to two and the number of stones in c is equal to six so how many more stones i can take out i can take out obviously two more stones because b has two and c has six so now i can take out two more stones and the answer will become four which is not like not obviously beneficial so as you can see now if you just read out the examples only now you'll get the intuition there are three examples and reading out the examples only will give you the intuition now as you can see uh, you cannot always do this in in any order you have to do this in some order now which order to take let's assume that i'll take out this four four and six okay and then we'll take out four four and six okay now as you can see if we just mimic out the process which is shown in the thing what they are actually doing is first take out the first and the third element the first and the third the first and the third okay so now this will become zero and this will become four because i'm taking two elements from here and two elements from here so it will become two like four and four now because they both become equal we will keep decreasing down to zero at the same time so which is like fulfilling our needs so which means that we should first sort the whole piles out which means that maybe the like the piles are six four four just sort them out so it will become like this after sorting it out what it is beneficial to make the second and the last pile equal by taking out the elements from here okay if i take out the elements from here it will become like this uh, uh like i can take out the elements from here and here and make this zero if i make this zero i will take out some elements elements from here it will become like equal to two equal to four i have total score of four till now because i have taken four elements from both of these piles now how many more stones i can take i can take two more stones and then this will become zero and the total answer will become six but does the answer is equal to six so the answer is equal to seven so as you can see what they are doing now here is as you can see what i am losing here is i am losing this very large value at this four point like if i decrease down it will become two which is a like a large value so like what you can easily do here is first take out the value in this what they are actually doing is take out the value from a and b okay then from first and third okay first and third then first and third okay so now they are alternating between the first and the second i am as you can see in the first example i am taking the smallest element which is always fine like the first smallest element is always taken but i am taking the largest element but in the second example they are taking the smallest element and the like the two largest element so they are alternating between that and that's what we want to do and that's what we can understand that okay it is always beneficial to alternate between the two elements because to make them to the same level so if you understand the example more you can take the same example so now what you can easily do is first bring down the first element close to the second element okay so if you bring down this close to second element as you can see it will become i will take out two stones from here okay now my total score is two this will become equal to two this will still become four and this will become equal to four now i have two more stones left so i will alternate between these two piles which means that okay I will take out one stone from here and one stone from here. Now I will take out one stone from here and one stone from here. So I have taken two more stones. And now because there is only like uh, three stones left between them, just take out all the three stones. Now the total is three. Total of this becomes seven. And this seems a promising way. So what you just have to do here is first take out the minimum element and try to make out the minimum element. try to decrease down the minimum element such that the second and the third largest become as close as possible and after that when they become as close as possible what you will do 
you will decrease down like both of these two which are left to the smallest possible and that's the whole logic for this problem as you can see first sort down all the elements okay and then what you can easily do here is what you'll do you'll first bring the like take out some elements from this like the first pile and like make this second like the last maximum element as close as the second element so that they can become as close as possible so there are actually two cases i can either bring make it as close as possible make it every two two or i cannot make it let's assume that it is equal to one only the smallest is one and there are four and six so if i take out one it will become zero and if i take out one from it will become five so it will become four five it, it it will not become equal so we have to also check that how many elements we can take out to make this equal if you want to take this and make this equal how many elements more required this is d2 so d2 minus d1 is the number of gaps between these two elements so i have to fulfill those two elements to make them equal i can either decrease d2 elements or this d0 elements because these are the elements we have so as you can see we'll find out the minimum of the, both of them and then that's the total point will increment so this point will increment then i will make my d0 because that number of games we have played so we'll decrement both my d0 and d2 with this minimum one then what we'll do then we will alternate between the first like the second and the last like as you can see then we'll alternate between these two elements and how many elements are left in d0 we will decrement both of these elements by like first element second element first element second element which i've told you as you can see we'll iterate over the values in d2 which are left d0 which are left and then what you'll do you'll keep on incrementing your score because you're playing one game and if it is even decrement the d1 value or if it's odd decrement the d2 value and the end whatever the d1 and d2 values are left just find out the minimum of them and that's the total increment and that's the total answer i hope you understand the logic for the second problem also because uh, you just have to define or find out some logical way to like solve this or problem game okay so this is like sort of a game theory problem okay then the last problem is largest merge of two strings which means that you are actually given out two strings and you, I, i'll tell you in simple terms so let's assume that you're given two strings uh, in this example c a b a a sorry c a b a a and then the next is b c b c and a a a a a now which means that you have like uh, two pointers as you can see uh, one at here and one at here and you will keep popping out the elements from the f like both of these strings and make a new string let's assume that i will pop out the elements from the like like this Say c a and i can choose some b okay like some prefix type b c and then like b a a a and so on okay and then we have to like this is the resulting string and then you just have to find out what is the maximum lexicographically resulting string you can form i hope you understand the point so you have two pointers starting at both those like both the indexes of these two strings and you will keep popping out the elements from the start so as so that you have to form the maximum lexicographically largest string you can form now as you can see the the best way you can just iterate this whole thing also just take out two pointers a and b at the starting point whichever is the largest pop that out in the string like in the new string and just keep on forming as you can see this is c which is like greater because if you put c at the front at the front then obviously the string the resulting string will be more lexicographically largest so you will put like c then obviously between a and b b is beneficial then between a and c obviously c is beneficial between a and a like as you can see now b is required here so as you can see you'll put this b here then uh, you'll put this b here and all all, all are a left so a a a, a, a. this is lexicographically largest string as you can see that's the answer now how you can think about this problem is as you can see if like there are two strings maybe as you can see a a a b okay or a a a c okay now if you just do the same thing by two pointers because the two values which you are matching i and j both are same then how you can decide that okay i should take out this string like this character this character maybe if i keep popping out this character like a a a then i will reach a point which is b and that will make a lexicographically smaller string why because let's assume that i keep both of the strings or both of the characters are same let's assume that i randomly pick out this character which is i which is like this above element so it will form like this a a a and then because after that when because both of them are a i'm always choosing the first element then it will become b and a so then obviously b is greater so i will put b and then i will keep on putting the last elements 
So this is one option. Or the other option can be A, 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 and then there is one C. And then it is like A, 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 and B. So as you can see, this is obviously lexicographic largest, but I'm choosing this, which is like false answer. So as you can see, the answer actually lies out what the characters which are left. The characters which are left will actually tell me what is the answer which is left. So what, what we're gonna do here is in this problem is, uh, what you can easily see in this problem is, what you can do, we will keep popping out or keep iterating or keep like forming this string in such a manner such that we'll check if the rest of the elements among the rest of the string which is left, which string will form the lexicographically largest string. What I mean by this is, let's assume that if we just merge this and this string as a whole, if I merge this, which is like C A B A A B C A A A or the next string can be B C A A A and then C A B A A which string is lexicographically largest as you can see this string obviously because it has C so obviously because this string has C this string is largest obviously which means that we should always put C as the first character in the new string because because we are also merging out now this and this string is left obviously we, what we'll choose which string if we just combine them out whichever string will form the maximum part will merge that string with this part because it is like greedily merging out the new strings but also like making sure that the rest of the string which is formed or i'll tell you more with the example as you can see it is aab or aac okay if we just merge them out it will become like aab aac and then the next string can be aaac a A A B, which string is lexicographically largest as you can see this why because this c will making this string lexicographically largest and thus you will choose or pop out the this a not this a and thus will pop out this a because this later part is lexicographically maximum than this part and thus because you're popping this a out the later part will make the later half of, later half of the string more lexicographically largest and that's the logic you just have to check out if the rest of the string, if we merge them out, which string is forming the lexicographically largest part. Okay. So I'll tell you, as you can see, uh, iterate over the whole string, take two pointers i and j. Okay. So I have to check that if I am taking the i th character, if I am on the i th character, what are the rest of the string left? So if the total length is n and we are on the i th point, how many strings are left? n minus i. If this is the i th point on which we are, and the total length is n. So if like this is a length, this is like total, it is n length. Sorry. The total is n length. So what is the length which is left? n minus a. Obviously, so it is i. So n minus i, n minus i string is left. So, so starting from which index? i, i index and n minus string is left. So because you are using the substring function, substring function will find out the substring. Uh, we will have to just input the uh, the starting index and the length of the string which we want to like the length of the string we have to extract so from w1 we'll extract out this string and from w2 we'll extract out the other string j and i string and x and y so if x plus y is greater obviously the which means that if we combine the string x plus y and y plus x there are two, two two different strings so if x plus y is greater what i mean by this that the ith character should be extracted out because that will form a larger string and thus will like add in the answer the ith character which is in the w1 string and now because we have taken the ith character we'll increment the i plus like i to the next character else we have to take out the jth character and increment by j to the next character we'll do this iteration of this while loop till both i and j are inbound if any one of those goes out of bound which means that one string is completely exhausted now my other cases whatever string is left just put down that string as a whole because now we have no other option because one string is completely exhausted out that's what we are doing just taking out like checking out both of the strings if both if any of the string has some character left just iterate them or like put that character into the answer plus plus and that sounds i hope you understand the logic for all the three problems if you still have any doubts you can mention in the comment box i'll see you next one till then keep coding and bye